What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Good, The Bad and The Stupid. It's Monday the 2nd of March. Hope you're well, had a fantastic weekend. I had a good weekend, that's why I've got a hangover, even still today. I'm suffering, but uh, it's also a slow news day today, so it's going to be painful for me and it's going to be painful for you. So on the back of that enthusiastic intro, hopefully you're going to stick around. <laughs> that's it, you've cut me off. I thought I'd just, I like that, I don't want to lie to you, I feel like we're all friends here, I want to... Uh, uh, better to say it like it is because when I get halfway through and you think this guy is talking a right load of bollocks I've given myself some kind of an excuse anyway so uh, anyway there's uh, a few things in it what's with the people are selling uh, the hand sanitizer people are putting the prices up on hand sanitizer because everyone's putting out the um, the coronavirus warning that um, you know to wash your hands and everything and everyone's stocking up now on uh, on toiletries and whatnot and some shopkeepers are putting them up 99p hand sanitizer putting them up to 4.99 and things like that that's unscrupulous and uh, I, I don't think it's fair so I, I'm, I'm now um, I'm now uh, my, I've got my right I'm trying to think of what the fucking word is here I'm going to exercise my right to shoplift <laughs> because that's way way overpriced and uh, under the circumstances circumstances we need hand sanitizer and you're selling sa hand sanitizer far too much way above what it's worth um, so I think we need the clause that we're allowed to shoplift on the back of that because for health and safety reasons everybody's got to have hand sanitizer so I think we're just gonna shoplift for now and we'll get that one in the law <laughs> A little bit later on when we all get nicked otherwise there's plenty of shoplifters out there I'm gonna put a order in now if you're a shoplifter and you're out and you're out and about put that on the list we've already got batteries links um, what's the usuals condoms aftershave they're usually fucking standard ones that are tough paste we all we all have them ones but what about the you now we want hand sanitizer so do us a favor I'll pay you two pound how about that that's a pound more than it is in the shop I'm not paying four ninety nine when uh, you you know you're clearly being ripped off. <laughs> they just try on, don't they? You got to you got to uh, you got to admire them. But uh, I'm sorry, but they can work both ways. You're ripping us off, and we're going to rip you off back. Anyway, leave a comment when you've got some. <laughs> I like um, any antibacterial ones. I like the blue ones, the, the minty smell. Um, an unknown actor as an uh, oh an unknown actor he is an unknown actor he's not going to be unknown for long because he's got a part playing prince andrew <laughs> that's his lucky break he's got a part to play prince andrew in the new uh, in the crown the royal series about the the, the crown P playing a bed hopping so he's always been up to it a bed hopping pin up as he was when he was younger he looks totally different when he was younger prince andrew there's a picture of him there he looks Sweet and innocent there, but uh, quite clearly he's not these days, is he? We know better. We know he's, uh, he talks out his ass for starters, and he's um, an arrogant, apparently, I mean, I don't know him personally, but apparently people who have worked with him have said he's quite arrogant, and, uh, and that's why he thought he could get away with that um, TV interview, the car crash. And he's probably come away from that thinking, I don't get it, that TV interview went really, really well. <laughs> I don't know what the fucking, where everybody's um, got it all mixed up from. I don't know why people are still fucking, uh, um, you know, I thought I've exonerated myself. But no, and this guy's having to play him, so uh, I, would, I would just turn it down. If I was an unknown actor, I'd say, sorry, I'll stay unknown until something shitter comes along. Or better, should I say, comes along. That's probably the worst offer of... of uh, at least you're not playing him in his modern life. You're playing him as he was. You're not playing him fucking later on in life. I'm sure that would be fucking a bit uneasy, uneasy to watch, let alone to play. So uh, um, I'm not that bothered about. I don't watch that program. I'm not that bothered about the royal family. I find it very uninteresting. I couldn't. I couldn't handle being around the uh, uh, the royal. There's too much suits and everything. It's all very fucking. Um, uh, what's the word? Stuffy. Very stuffy. It's kind of like um, everything's. Regal, everything's got to be like that shit about when Prince Harry was op opened the car door for Meghan, or Harry as he's called now. But when he opened the car door for her, and it was fucking all over the papers and everything because he broke pro he broke what is usual 
for somebody to open a door for their um for his wife and that's down that's for the butlers and everything and that was fucking massive news it's just like oh fuck off really can't i just open a door without fucking somebody giving me a load of shit for it no forget that so how the fuck andrew thought he can get away with the shit that he's he's fucking uh been up to well he has got away with it i'm lo I'm, I'm he has got away with it but at least fucking somebody can come out and call him fucking what we think he is because he's not going to fucking get done, is he? I doubt it very much. Uh, anyway, the stripper, the stripper who broke his leg, knock, uh, the stripper, I said last week about a stripper who, fell, who pulled a pole out of the wall and smashed smashed the gran on the head who was at the hen party and knocked her out. Now he's suing the club for 500 grand. He said that he's not going to be able to work for six months. 500 grand? That's like, for, I tell you what, if that's half a year's wages... I'm fucking in the wrong job again. This podcasting isn't the one. Maybe I should do a stripper podcast. So I'm taking my clothes off and that. Well, I, think, I think that would like be... Um, I'd be banned. That would be taken off air. I'd have to be on like one of those... Uh, what are they called? Sex cams or some shit like that. But 500 grand he's trying to claim for half a year. He said he's not going to be able to work for six months and he's got a broken leg and he thinks that's worth 500 grand. So I'll tell you what. I should train up, dream boys, here I come. I don't think I'm too old for it. <clears throat> I could handle it. I'm just not going to be swinging on any poles. I don't think... Uh, you've already proved to me that that's dangerous um, adventure. I'm not good on ladders or anything like that. I'm fucking uh, Frank Spencer on anything like that. Anyway, ladders. Anything there is to fall off. I fell through, I fell through uh, a ceiling one time. Uh, when I, I worked for a, a job doing the labouring, and the guy said, Can, he didn't, to be fair, he didn't tell me to fucking watch it out. He just said, go up and get a few tools and that that was left in the in the loft. So I went up. I don't know, I ain't got a loft. I've never fucking hanged around in a loft. So as soon as I got up there, I walked to pick up the stuff and went straight through the ceiling. Because he didn't say, stay on the beams. And there was like the platforms on some parts, but I missed the platform and went straight through anyway. <laughs> That's another story, but uh, he, he paid me shit money anyway, so deserves what he got. Um, yeah, so uh, so there you go, five hundred grand. I'm um, anyway. My next job, stripping. That's that's up, uh, and I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm not on the building site. I'm talking dream boys, or what's the other ones? Chipping Dales. <laughs> Is that yeah, dream boys? South End in Essex. Um, so yeah. I don't think it's worth 500 grand though. I think uh, he's trying to pull the fucking wall there. He can, I literally, I, if, I, if it's worth 500 grand, I'd, you could break my fucking leg and I'll take the 500 grand. <laughs> because he ain't going to get it, is he? Anyway, let's move on. I've uh, lost my train of thought. Hardcore, Only Fools and Horses. Uh, oh, Only Fools and Horses did an exhibition and they set up the. the um, they set up the room, the living room, Del Boy and uh, Rodney's living room. They set it up in the exhibition so you could go and sit in there and have a photo. And he's there and have a photo. And they had all the cast and that and crew, which is brilliant. I would love to see that. Uh, that would be like a, what's it called? A, a dream come true for me because I fucking love Only Falls and Horses. Of course, he's, he's, he's even on my set. Look, there we go. Kushdie. I love Only Falls and Horses. And... Um, but, and apparently it was like 50 quid in or something or other. But then to go and like have a photo with him, they're charging 375 fucking pound to have a photo with uh, David Jason. He could at least be dressed as, he's not dressed as Del Boy. If he was dressed as Del Boy, I wouldn't even pay it then anyway. There's no way I'd pay 375 quid. But um, I'd like to go and look at it and see the uh, and see the room. But I wouldn't pay 375 pound to see if I could just stand next to anybody. <laughs> Fuck that. It's a fall in your money, isn't it? But but it would have been better a photo it had he be dressed as Del Boy with the cap and the sheepskin on and all the all the business. But he's got a suit on there. It's just David Jason there. Um, but you you know you got a load of other things with it, uh, souvenir program and whatever else. But and who else is there? There was all there. Was Rodney there? Boise was there. Marlene and Boise. Who else was there? Is that it? <laughs> you want the whole. Shebang, I'll give Trigger a miss because he's dead. But I want Rodney there, fucking at least. 
Uh, yeah, Rodney, Uncle Albert, he's dead. So, uh, anyway, Ricky Hatton, he went and paid, but he's got money, so uh, he can fucking afford it. But apparently a lot of it went to charity anyway, so uh, I was going to say, if you want to go, you can't because it was yesterday. <laughs> so, you missed your chance. But I tell you what, I've had half the stuff that he's got in his house. The bar, the cocktail bar, I've had half them things for sale myself. I've bought them and sold them. So I could probably set up my living room to look like that. Half the time it does with all the fucking shit around. That's why I like it so much. It's like a, I'm walking it. I'm walking the life, the life anyway that they do. <clears throat> Feast and famine. Um... Boxer, if that's why I'm going to join the strippergrams, the strippers, because I didn't realise that was such good money. And you're probably not fucking not short of a knocking or two. Not that I would fucking be there for that. Not with the grannies. <laughs> Grab a grannies. Um, speaking of uh, veterans, a boxer here who's a boxer, he's going to be a boxing match. I think I might have spoke about this before. Is that, or is this another one? There's two boxers going to go head to head, 84 and 75. One of them used to be a boxer in 1968, and he's coming out at the age of 75 to take on an 84-year-old opponent. Well, straight away, I'm not going to fucking... Um, <laughs> I've not even checked them out, but yeah, but I'm going to go with the 74-year-old on this one. Because 84... They look fit, they both look fit, and I'm just being facetious, really, but... You know, there might be a heart attack to be had and I'm going to pay to be bets with a 75-year-old. <laughs> but they're going out. Is it a charity one or they're going it for money? It's just big, big bucks. Hey, if you feel like it, fuck it. You can do it, can't you? I don't think it's going to be one at Las Vegas, but it might be... A, where are they doing it? An exhibition match. Um, stage the fight in Bulkington in Warwickshire. No idea where that is, but... Um, that is going to be, it's going to pull the crowds, isn't it? I think that one's going to be uh, um, anybody that wants to see, like, what the fuck is going to happen if one of them fucking keels over. And they'll have the ambulances and everything there already. But that like I said, it gives you something to train for and it gives them something to, um, to aspire to. Doesn't matter how old you are, does it? You've got to get a fucking. If you're not in a wheelchair, <laughs> have a go. A couple, it's got to be better than this. Wives carrying a couple compete to win a hundred and fifty barrel of ale. In the, in the, they've got some strange competitions around. The World Wife Carrying Championships. Is it the world? The UK Wife Carrying Championships. So there's obviously a world one. Maybe you'll qualify if you win this one to go off to the World Wife Carrying Competition. Now, I tell you what, you got to like check your wife first. If it's like, I mean, this guy's all right. He's about six, six foot five, and his wife looks half his size, so he's getting away with that one. What about if you're like six? What about if you're four foot five and your wife's four foot wide? <laughs> it's not going to be a very easy competition, is it? That's not an even playing field. In fact, you're just going to have to say sorry, love, but this year we're out, we're uh, <laughs> it's we're not going to enter. <laughs> I've got a bad back, and. Um, you know, you've not, you've not been training. Let's put it that way. Let's say it the nice way. You've not been training as you, as you could, and you've been fucking doubling up, down dominoes. So uh, I'm afraid I'm not going to be carrying you. How long they got to carry for? Four hundred and fifteen yards, um, and they get um, those. Those carried can, in fact, be male or female. With the last duo getting a pot, a pot noodle and dog food. That's what you get if you lose a pot noodle and dog food. Well, it's better than nothing. The ones in the middle don't get nothing by the looks of it. So um, there you go. Maybe you should have carried your four-foot wide wife and you could have had a putt noodle because you wouldn't have won. <laughs> anyway, so there's a, a shit competition. If you ever want to join it and go and carry your wife somewhere or you want a reason to carry your wife, carry your wife. Instead of car forget it, just carry her off to bed. If you're still in love and you've still got it going on, just put her on your shoulder and take her upstairs to bed. Or if you're in a bungalow... <laughs> You just had two 84 year old, a 74 and 84 year old boxer going going out into the boxing ring. So maybe you can carry them in your bungalow on your Zimmer frame, get her over your shoulder or over your Zimmer frame, and carry her into the bedroom. <laughs> Don't kill her in on the way there or when you get there. You know what I mean. Just enjoy yourself, but be careful. 
I didn't invent these competitions. I'm just trying to create new ones, better ones, more interesting ones. Um, sex, speaking of sex. Well, did I speak of sex? I did in the in the roundabout way. I didn't actually say it was sex, did I? But uh, anyway, Norwich City fans are bottom of the table of the sexiest fans in the Premier League and least likely to get a date. How the fuck did they come up with these things? I, I just like to say, Birmingham City are in the Championship. So had we be in this, um, uh, in, had we be in the Premiership, we would be at the top. We would have won this. But it looks like Manchester United. It's always Manchester. Manchester. We Manchester were voted the the the, the sexiest accent once, and Birmingham was put last. But it was run by a website called We Love Manchester, so no fucking bias there. And uh, and there's a bit of a rivalry between Birmingham and Manchester, so no no um, surprise to me that Manchester have given themselves a top. I'm sure there's something to do with it. Liverpool next, Arsenal next, and then Manchester City. Bottom is Norwich, Walford, Watford. And Southampton. It's just down to the money, isn't it? If you've got the money, it's all again about the money. Oh, the one, well, let's go for the ones with the money. <laughs> money always puts a fucking a better a better picture on your face. You ever seen an ugly bloke and then found out he's a big like million pound? All of a sudden, he's a fucking quite attractive bloke. Not to me. Well, you can just tell by the kind of uh, woman that he's uh, got knocking on his arm. Uh, so there you go. If you're a Norwich fan, I feel for you, but uh, I'm afraid you need to get you need to get up the table. If you get up the table and you win some money and you get some money, get some better players, you might be in the chance with the date. <laughs> you might be able to get a girlfriend. It's going to be like that China. I saw a thing in China once where China um, there was a guy who couldn't get a date in China, and this is a sad story because it was um, all the. When they did the two system, the two child system or the one child system, people were having people who were having girls or, or were pregnant with girls were terminating because they wanted a boy. Most people wanted a boy, and I don't know what the reason for that was, but there was a lot of terminations or a lot of people who um, would keep trying until they had a boy because they could only have one. And uh, and this town, this guy couldn't get a date because there wasn't enough women. There was not enough. This is like years later, and he was going to these like meetups where um, loads of blokes all turn up, and there's only like say there's fifty women, but there's a thousand men. So the women then choose a bloke out of these like meetups in these shopping malls and whatever, and he couldn't get a date, and he kept trying and kept trying. I don't know what happened in the end, but uh, it was really sad. So um, it just shows what those kind of uh, when you get those kind of controls by government. You know, government um, uh, when they when they tell you to do things like that, and it kind of creates like a massive problem further down the line with social problems. But I mean, in some places in the country, and it, people like Italy and that, they're saying that they haven't got enough, they're not having enough babies born anyway. So they're trying to get people to uh, to have more have more babies. So crazy. They should just fucking add a load of Chinese people over there because they're struggling. Had too many. They have to ship the Chinese in. You have a load of Chinese babies. I don't know. What are you going to do? The world's fucking overpopulated anyway, isn't it? So really, you should just move people around, like I just said. But they don't want to do that. Um, because then that becomes... That becomes immigration problem then, doesn't it? So, fuck it. Anyway, let's move on to... Uh, Jaffa's... I've told you I'm struggling today, but uh, Jaffa's ja a man has been crowned the nation's unofficial Jaffa cake eating champion after gobbing 36 in just three minutes. I, I pulled that out because it's a shit competition again, really shit. And uh, and I think I could beat that. I reckon I could fucking beat that easy. 36 Jaffa cakes, they're not even that big. I could easily do that. I'd probably fucking choke to death because they're dry as anything, can't they? <laughs> But um, I reckon I could swallow it, get rid of 36 in more than three minutes. So I might have to enter next year. I'm not going to enter. That's ridiculous. I might just do it here for the podcast and just have a go. Try and munch 36 and just prove that I could be better than the, the uh, than joining that stupid competition. It's at the British Eating League Contest. So there's... There's a league and they're doing it in the George Pub and Grill. So they're obviously doing it. The next contest is to eat a double chocolate fudge cake in the quickest time. 
So that's because the big fatties are going to all be applying for that one. They'll be like, fucking, you know what I mean? They'll be like scooping it up with their hands and everything. That'd be like their favourite competition. That's like their favourite thing in the world, isn't it? Eating. Some of them eating competitions are just crazy, you know? They're just ridiculous. But I mean, if it's a big fat people, that's all right because they love food. But some of them, they're like, there was one woman, she was training and she was really fit, really pretty girl and everything. And she was like, fit body and everything. But her insides must fucking uh, be destroyed because she was eating like a hundred hot dogs or something like that and like literally not even swallowing them she was pushing them down and that i mean she's done a lot of other training as well i don't think that all that training is coming just from the gym swallowing condoms without uh, condoms <laughs> swallowing hot dogs without swallowing that's a different kind of training altogether anyway whatever you aspire to be I, who am i to judge uh i think i'm going to leave it there Oh, taking regular, I'm going to leave it on this one then. Take, taking regular siestas could be an early warning sign of a serious illness, such as, well, I've been napping today. I, I, I had to have a nap today because I was need, but, but how many times have you read things that people are saying that having a nap in the day is like good for you? And I never, I never, ever, ever do that. But I found myself fucking nodding a little bit earlier on. And now I've just read that and it's like, put me, but mine's, definitely caused by having no sleep at the weekend <laughs> so i'm going to give myself uh, i'm not going to worry too much but um it's, it's saying that cat naps could be a uh, half time could be could be likely to develop cardiovascular disease and how many times have they said that that's good for you so you just can't believe a fucking thing that you that you read can you so just go with the flow do what feels right but i don't think sleeping in the day Spain, they can do it because that's fucking that's just Spain, isn't it? That's Spanish is part of their culture and heritage. But I think trying to go to sleep in the middle of the day, it's weird, isn't it? You wake up and you're all disorientated. You don't know where you are. You're like fucking your ears all over the place because you've just put your head down for a sec. So you've, the air that you've done is now all squashed and that. So you never write. I'm never if I do that, I'm never right again for the rest of the day. So anyway, that's my opinion on it. You do what you fucking like. <laughs> But you've told you, it's a warning. It could be a sign of an uh, uh, of an illness. So I'll be staying awake now, even when I'm fucking desperate for to uh, get a quick twenty winks. I got one mate. He just he, he he sits down and literally, he's asleep. You're talking to him. I don't know if it's me, but my brummy accent. But you're speaking to him. Next thing you know, you'll and you'll have another look, and he's passed out. <laughs> he's got narcolepsy, but. Maybe it's something more sinister. I'll have to give him a call and tell him to go and check it out. But I'm going to leave it there anyway because uh, I need to go and get another 40 winks in and uh, get to bed early. So I'll see you again here this time tomorrow with hopefully better news and a better sounding voice from me. I'm not sounding too croaky. See you later on. See you for now. Bye.